In this video, we're gonna go from this to this. Okay, so I need to get this car inspected, but it has the error P1000. And basically what that means is I need to drive it more or to get more information to pass the emissions test. So what I'm gonna do is go drive the car and, and the parameters to get the catalyst to, to work is drive at 30 to 35 miles an hour for about 15 minutes and then drive about 55 to 60 for about 15 minutes. And during this, you cannot use your cruise control and your AC. So keep that in mind if, you, if you're trying to perform this test. And the way I'm, I'm looking at it to see if the emissions has been passed or not, it's one of these little blue dongles. I actually have a video about this little guy and the torque app and how to use it. So I'm not going to go into detail about that, but first you just plug this into your OBD2 and then use the torque app to look up the correct page to see if it's passed all the emission cycles that it needs. Not just throwing in a light, but emission cycle. I guess this is, this is put into place so you don't just simply just clear the codes and go to your emissions facility and get it tested. So uh, you have to drive a certain way, a certain number of miles to get all the sensors to check. And I have the catalyst and the evap canister. My understanding is most states don't require the evap canister. So again, the first thing I'm gonna do is plug this thing in. And this is a 2002 Thunderbird, and on it, basically right here, this arrow piece points towards the front of the car, and the OBD2 connector is up underneath the steering wheel, just straight up. I would show you, but this is pretty hidden. In fact, there's a piece of duct work that's kind of semi in front of it. So i got to kind of feel my way around to get that plugged in. Okay, once it's plugged in, you should see a little light on it coming on. And next, I will open up my torque app. Okay, so um, first thing you do is start the car up. You let it run for about 15 seconds. Um, I'm probably gonna let it run for about a minute or so just to make sure I've got the cycle in because it's kind of cold today. And that has to be, and that has to be from a complete cold start to warm up. And generally speaking, once you see the revs drop down, that should tell you that it's warmed up. But I'm gonna go ahead and give it just a little bit longer just to make sure so I don't have to do this again. And again, your AC has to be off and no cruise. So what I was talking about before, about it not going through the codes, right here, uh, you can see the catalyst is incomplete and the EVAP system is incomplete. Those have to be completed for, well, the catalyst has to be completed for it to pass emissions. So again, I'm going to go drive 30 to 35 miles an hour for about 15 minutes to get the first part of the test done. And the second one will be 60, 60, 65, somewhere around there with uh, it being as steady as you can keep it. And that's for about 15 miles as well, or 15 minutes. Well, 15 minutes, 15 miles, do the math, right? So anyway, um, as soon as this warms up, I'm gonna back out of here and get started. And also, just real quick while it's warming up, I can go ahead and do a check the fault codes. And you'll see here that there's no actually, no pending fault codes, no nothing actually showing at this time. Yeah, see, so there's no fault codes stored. Um, so everything's working right. It's just got to go through the right cycles to see that it's working right. So while I'm waiting, a quick review of this app. It's got some really cool stuff in here, by the way. Um, under real-time information, of course, it gives you just this. And there's all sorts of custom dashboards and themes you can put in here, too. Um, also, it gives you your tack, speed, percent of throttle, vacuum you're running, coolant. You can see it's definitely not warmed up yet because it's at 123 degrees right now. And if you want to go have some fun, you got 0 to 60, 0 to, zero to 60 miles per hour, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour, quarter mile time, eighth mile time. Uh, also, you can put in there 60 to 0 braking. And it'll give you the time, different G's for skid pad. And the horsepower is the amount of horsepower you're taking up at that point in time. All right, so the journey begins. 
So to save you from watching me drive for 30 minutes, I finished up the Ford recommended method, at least as best as I could. With traffic, it's very difficult to do those procedures and stay dead on them. So I think I got close, but it did not clear the code. It did not, did not show that it had finished the cycle. So I let it rest for one day and then came back out and tried again, but I tried with a different method. And by the way, I'll have links to both of these methods down there in the description. So please take a look at those also, that I'll give you a little bit more information. So then I tried a second method, and on this method it says use a cold start. Don't leave your keys in prior to the cold start, for example, after leaving the car overnight. So basically let the car set overnight. Do a cold start, let it idle for three minutes with electrical equipment on, AC headlights, rear defroster, all turned on. Then after the three minutes, after it's come to temperature, turn off the AC and rear defroster. Put the vehicle in gear and drive up to 35 miles per hour and come to a complete stop. This should be natural city driving for a few minutes. So do that a couple of times and then get on the freeway, but accelerate slow, uh, just nice and slow up to 55 and then maintain that speed for three to five minutes. And this is the tricky part. Uh, then decelerate down to below 20 miles per hour without braking or depressing the clutch if you have a tr manual transmission. Turn on your hazard lights if you need to, so you can warn people around that you're, well, doing stuff. So what I did is I found a country road that had a, uh, a bit of a hill. And so I, I, as I started going up the hill, I just let off the, off the gas and let it coast down to, actually let it go down to about 10 miles per hour. And then the next step after that is accelerate smoothly to 55 and maintain speeds for five minutes. I saw two different ways of doing this, and I did it this way, as I accelerated to 55 quite briskly, almost like you're doing a 0-60 to 60 run. So I, I I did it fast. I accelerated up quick, then held 55 for about 5 minutes, and then repeated the deceleration down to 20 miles an hour without braking or depressing the gas, and boom, it reset. It said that the cycle had been complete. So I don't know for sure if... The Ford one didn't quite complete, and you know the second one that I did just completed that task, or if the second one on its own did it. So anyway, try these methods. If anybody wants to try that second one first and let me know how they did in the description, that would be great because that could help other people out. Oh yeah, and one other thing, um, I was concerned about having to do it in the exact the, using the exact repetition that they talk about with no driving in between. And on my second drive, I definitely had some different driving in between just because I had to for stop signs and that sort of thing. So it's not like it resets the clock every time you have to stop at a stop sign, even though you're supposed to be decelerating uh, from zero without using your brake. So, you know, if you do come up on a, a situation where you need to stop or, or restart, go ahead and it's not going to affect fin finalizing those results. So anyway, this, this is what it took for me to get this, this car done. I would love to know what your experience is, and I would especially like to know that if somebody did just the second part first, if that helped them. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please select like down there and subscribe to my channel. If you didn't like it, well, subscribe to the channel. Maybe you like the next one. Thank you for watching.